I was on Hannah Brown's season, which was the most recent Bachelorette season. She was Alabama. She was been on the previous Bachelor season, which was Colton's season. I mean, I'm glad I did it. Uh, it was a really cool experience. I uh, met some really great guys. Still friends with a lot of them. Ran the Chicago Marathon with a couple of them back in October. Mm. And I'm excited to see what happens with Peter's season. So how many people were on? Uh, there were 30 guys. Quickly gets cut down. There's kind of a formula to it. And how long did you last? About four weeks on the show, which was fun. Mainly, I was excited for my friends and family to watch. It would just be really funny for them. So I didn't get as much airtime as, as I would have hoped. It was more of a really complicated Where's Waldo game. Where they're trying to find me the whole time. We had see me in the background. <laughs> what is it? Yeah. This is yeah. yeah. All my friends and family really enjoyed that. So I had fun during filming and watching it. I think they enjoyed it after. So I didn't end up with her, but I think everybody everybody wanted that situation of, of just enjoying it. Absolutely. Sizzling podcast session store for y'all today. Whew. First time ever using three cameras, so I went a little ham on the editing. This 100-minute century-long episode goes deep into so many amazing topics. You can feel the good energy. Mateo is the greatest of guests, so y'all tune into a good one. One of the best episodes we've done in a while. Hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> Welcome to the 15th episode of the Mr. Atlanta Podcast. David Roland Brown here with Mateo Valls. Where are you from? And what's a little blurb about that? I'm from Atlanta. I've been here for about 10 years now. Professionally, my brother and I are starting our own company, a virtual reality mental health company. Maybe we'll talk about that later. That's a little bit about me. I'm moving to Tennessee in a month, actually. Really? So we'll be leaving Atlanta. It's been a nice no. time. Yeah. It's been you a nice leaving us? Yeah. Where are you going in Tennessee? Knoxville. Knoxville? Yeah. It's been a nice home for 10 years, but an opportunity came up there. Uh, that I want to take advantage of, so mm. I'll be going there probably at least for two years, but maybe I'll come back after. Mm. Yeah. You want to expand on that? Uh, about what the opportunity is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so basically, uh, my stepbrother is a business broker up there, which is basically a real estate agent for businesses. Typically, it'll be helping somebody sell their own business. You could also help somebody buy a business, though. When I graduated from college, I had a mechanical engineering degree from Georgia Tech. I realized I didn't want to do mechanical engineering. I wanted to do more business. It was a little more social. Um, and so I went to a management consulting firm, didn't learn as much as I was hoping to about business there. I thought that would teach me a lot about it. So now this opportunity came up and it seems still kind of entrepreneurial in a way where I'll be doing my own thing and trying to get my own clients and everything like that, but also learning a lot about business, talking with business owners about how their business runs. Hopefully it'll be a better experience than the management consulting because I thought that was going to be the, the prime experience there. Oh, yeah. Very cool. So I plan on doing that for at least two years. To learn enough, and then uh, maybe I'll pop back over to Atlanta and we'll see. Okay, yeah. nice. It's not that far. No, it's like three hours. And my brother will still live here, so I'm sure I'll be driving back on the weekends and stuff. Oh, booyah. Yeah. So what's your story? Where'd you grow up? Uh, so I, growing up, I moved around pretty much every three years. Um, Why? The Due to my dad's job. So the longest, I was, it's like a fun fact for me, I feel like, is the longest house I've ever continuously lived in was a fraternity house. No way. Yeah, I lived there for an entire three years, which is the longest I'd ever been in like one house. Because it typically, yeah, when we, growing up, I was born in Boston. Um, we lived there for like just under three years and then popped over to Washington, D.C. Mm. Lived there for about three years, went over to Gulfport, Mississippi, there for three years. Uh, Vienna, Austria for three years. Nairobi, Kenya for two years. And then we've been in Georgia for 10 years. But we were always like jumping houses. My parents kind of got divorced, so we kind of slipped between houses and stuff like that. So somehow, Fraternity House ended up being the, uh, the, the stable longest, housing yeah, the longest, <laughs> of your yeah. adolescence. Exactly. So um, <laughs> and that was just my dad worked for the federal government, and we didn't have to move, but there were always different opportunities. And I know my mom loved to travel, so we just kind of kept taking advantage of and jumping around. Yeah. Wow. I love it. What does he do or did for the government? Uh, so he used to work for the FBI. He's retired now, but yeah. Cool. Yep. And Can you mom, talk about what he did? Uh, I never really knew much about what he did. I don't know because it's secret necessarily, but I was just a kid and I just never really asked my dad too much about what he did at that time. If he still worked there, it'd probably be more interesting as an adult now. Yeah? Uh, yeah, so, but my mom also works for the government in the State Department, so now she's the one who kind of moves all over the world. No way. Yeah. What's she doing in the State Department? Uh, so she, right now, is just like a secretary or office manager for the ambassador. Uh, over in Morocco, I believe. No way. Yeah. So for Christmas, my family's going to Morocco to hang out with her. So we always get like a fun little vacation because uh, she's always, before she was in uh, Mauritius off the coast of Madagascar, 
we, before that she was in Tokyo, Vietnam, the Philippines. So we kind of always get these like fun little vacations just wherever her mom lives. So it's a pretty good time. Wow. So she just works for different ambassadors? It's not always an ambassador. It's like in the, in the State Department, from what I understand, like different positions kind of come open and they, you have to like bid on it. So it's every like two or three years, basically, you have to almost find another job. And mm -hmm. so they'll basically say like, okay, in Morocco, there's a position open for, as the secretary for the ambassador. Um, in Tokyo, there's a position in the political sector, um, working under the political officer there or something. In Nairobi, there's some, like you're working in the front office, helping with visas and you're like working with the consulate and you kind of, you might apply based on location, you might apply based on job type, pay grade, whatever it is. So you kind of look in at all those different factors. Mm -hmm. And she landed in Morocco this past August. So I think she's there for two or three years. Nice. Yeah. So yeah I'm actually, excited. I've been to Morocco. Really? It seems mm -hmm. like an awesome place. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yes. we went to um, Shafshawin, cool. Tangiers, through Morocco, yes. and the Caves of Hercules. Ooh, okay, where are the Caves of Hercules? Oh, uh, it's in Tangiers. Okay, cool. A little spot up there, and right. it's these big, crazy really? caves. Yeah, they're kind of underground. You walk through this okay. cavern, yeah. and then it's they have multiple jumps. I think there were three different areas. The first one was pretty low. You could jump down into the water. The oh, second oh, you're like jumping high. off ledges into water? Yeah, yeah caves. Cool. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. Uh, so the first ledge was maybe 10, yeah, 15 like feet one. up, not too high. You could like climb up to it. Yeah. The second one's like, 25, 30 feet. No, and the third one was like 80. Oh, jeez. And me like and where Stavik, you can hurt land wrong. Right. Yeah. And you actually had to jump through a, a ring, like a hoop in the water, oh, a rock. Oh, yeah, I don't think and I'm you had to literally that. dive through it. And jeez. my buddy Ricardo, yeah. um, his parents he actually did. worked for the UN I'm in New York. Nice. So I was living in Spain, doing a study abroad, studying Spanish, and yeah. we did an excursion to Africa. Cool. Um, from Sevilla and nice. he was in a Sevilla group and so it was like 90 girls and eight guys. Wait, what, is, the, what is the Sevilla group? What is that? Uh... So, Sevilla is a part of Spain. Okay, cool. Okay. And they had this. I thought that pertained to the fact that there were a lot of girls and not a lot of guys or something. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's so, crazy yeah. the ratio study abroad, man. Like 10 to yeah. 1 plus all the time. Interesting. I yeah. heard. Okay. Cool. So it's like, you know, these a few dudes and all these girls and we saw these Moroccans cave jumping. We're like, fuck that, oh, I want to do yeah. it too. Yeah, let's, let's do this. Yeah. And so we stripped down from our boxers. <laughs> jump into the caves and stuff. No, yeah, we dive oh, yeah. in, dude. Like, And so I dive in off the top one and then he jumped through also and he actually like he hit shoulder. the rock. Yeah, he caught the rock at the top of his shoulder. Got a little Jeez. bloody, but that was on like the second jump. But still, like we got cocky after the first one, a little, bit, <laughs> a little bit. But still, we did it. Yeah, you know? cool. And it was so cool. And round the trip was just like ranting and raving. And we made a promise to link back up in America nice. after that, and we did. Really uh, cool. He was my first host in New York, nice. uh, like ten years ago. Yeah, cool. And um, his parents lived on Roosevelt Island. I guess that's oh, still yeah, nice. Um Are you familiar? No, I'm not. So it's this little strip of island between Brooklyn and Manhattan. Okay. Um, and they had like a, a psych ward at the top of the oh, island really? and then they converted it to the bougie <laughs> condos. Yeah. Just took it from a psych ward to like the coolest place ever to live. Yeah. Okay. And the views over the Hudson, dude, are yeah. stupid. So you're pretty much just on like a little, a little island in the middle of the Hudson, I imagine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Oh, yeah. It's this little strip. Yeah, it's got its own special stop you like to cool. with the MTA. Uh, we'll have to check out the caves of Hercules then if uh, if our trip allows for checking. It out. Yeah, you know, I, I I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say I got hookups yeah. in in yeah, Morocco. You know, yeah. it's 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 like a third world country yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah, you know, like no, for sure. So like, there's booze is pretty much illegal like all over. Yeah. Um, there's yeah, some sure places that have it, but we had to like really travel to get it. We yeah. were staying at like this resort, but. Yeah. You know, it was a super nice five star resort, but surrounded by an yeah. impoverished country. When we were trying to come back to Spain, um, three dudes crawled underneath our charter bus. And like grabbed them? Yeah. Oh, and, geez. And like and tried, tried to, to get on to ride the bus onto in. the ferry. We took one of those like speed yeah. bullet ferries. Only 55 minutes from Spain to Africa. 
And so they like, and you drove the bus onto it. So they were hoping to like hang on and get base band ER up. Yeah, and they they actually got on and like stayed under for a little bit. Yeah, and then and the they bus driver got off. He knew it. He just like I guess knew that he guess this has happened before. Yeah, or they never yeah. keep an eye out for it. Yeah, I <laughs> like, watch for people like <laughs> trying to hitch a ride. Just like, all right, come on. <sighs> it's crazy. I'm yeah. I'm sure it's like that all over the world. Yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely. There's a lot of a lot of third world countries where that stuff's more common than we would think. Oh yeah. So when one would think. Yeah, for sure. So where um, you went to different elementary and middle and high schools? Yeah, so it was always different schools, but it was uh, luckily pretty much across the world in most major cities, it seems that there's international schools which are primarily taught in English. So um, so we did change schools every, basically every time we moved, which was tough, but at least it was, uh, at least in the international schools, people are in and out so fast. Like when we came back to public school in America, you think that would be, more like home base because that's kind of where we had grown up at least for the first like 10 years. Um, but it was tough because everybody had been friends since like first grade mm-hmm. and I'm coming in ninth grade. Uh, so it was really tough to kind of like navigate into a friend group. Every year it was like a new friend group pretty much. But in the international schools, people only live there. There will be a subset that, that have been there for forever, but primarily a lot of them were embassy kids and stuff like that also. Mm-hmm. And so they move every two or three years also. So no friend group is ever really like Stable sounds bad. It makes it sound like it's a bad friend group or something. But super glued down. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not like there's not like a us and them mentality. It's always like all oh, the new kids and you, everybody just kind of like works in the new people to their friend groups and stuff like that um, because it's just so transient. Mm-hmm. So luckily that was never that. The international schools were never that bad. Going back to public school was a little tough for sure. Really? Yeah. Me and and all my siblings struggled with it. I don't think I found my good friend group until the fourth year, which was my senior year. Oh wow. Yeah. Of college. Then, I'm oh, sorry, of, uh, of high, high school. school. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. College was in, obviously, like, I went in not really knowing many people at all. So, made a new friend group there. Um, but yeah, like, I, my sisters never really found it. They ended up moving overseas with my mom eventually. They, like, were like, I'm tired of America. I don't like it. Um, so, yeah. It was really? Kind of, yeah. We're all good now, but it, it's a hard adjustment. It is, yeah. True. So, you wouldn't expect it. Where, how old are your siblings? So I just turned 26, which means my brother's 24, and my sister's 22, and, and the youngest one is 20. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Oldest of four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, 26, 24, 22, 20? Yeah, so after I have Every my birthday, year. it's always very easy. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then eventually my brother will have a birthday and messes it up. But right now it's every two years, which is nice. What do you mean messes it up? Like, eventually he'll turn 25, and then you have to be like, wait, Tom's so 26. Okay, Dom just got one, which is 25, which means Kenneth's three years behind now. Whereas right now it's just two, 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 two. So it's easy. Um, <laughs> Don't age. <laughs> exactly. So, um, but yeah, and they were kind of all scattered. So I live with my brother here, but uh, my sister lives in, or the older of the two sisters lives in Cambridge, England. She's mm-hmm. going to college over there. And the other one uh, is up in Vermont during circus school. No way. Yeah. So not a traditional school. So instead of English, history, math, she has handstands, stretching, clowning, like trapeze, stuff like that. Yeah. It's Are you cool. for real? Yeah. That's kind of dope. jealous. And some, yeah. And sometimes little trait skills. Yeah. And sometimes I'm like, man, I wish I could do that. Like that's a good time. <laughs> So, but whenever we're together, we always try to do like circus stuff with her because it's just, it's too much fun. No way. Yeah. So like what? So I've done aerial silk several times because that's what she kind of like specializes in basically. Mm-hmm. Um, but then in August, we were in San Diego for a family reunion and they have like a really good circus school over there apparently. So we went and did uh, duo trape- trapeze, which is basically um, like I hang from my knees on the trapeze and I'm basically upside down and I'm holding her hands and we're kind of like flipping her around and doing different poses and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's super fun. It's very like painful on your knees, holding that much weight on a little bar, but uh, but very fun. Have you ever tried acro yoga? Um, I've messed around with it a little bit, yeah. But not too much. It's fun, dude. Yeah. Have yeah. you done it? Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, um, I've done it like a little bit in the past, but this year I was at the Dirty South Yoga Festival. Okay, where's that? Um, it was at the Louder Milk Fest uh, okay. Center downtown. It's in Atlanta. Off, off of Cortland in Auburn Avenue. Okay, cool. Uh, like George State Campus, right downtown. Oh, perfect. Okay. Um, and so they hosted like 
five thousand yogis really? from Atlanta. All doing like acro, acro yoga Atlanta. and stuff like that. Yeah. Cool. And so like there are these people doing acro, and I was taking around. pictures. I was like doing the steady cam, yeah. taking video and, and pics, nice. and working with this uh, King of, or Mary Pozo Pops. You know is that, that, is that uh, No, I don't. Have you seen him? Um, he's been out at some of the different brawl events. Oh, very cool. But so yeah, he was like, David, come up, come, come by and yeah. do this with me, yeah. And it was, yeah, it was just so. So I mean, it was like kind of the it best people to be around. Me. Cool. Yeah, like, especially like all hot chicks and yoga pants. Yeah. Like, everybody's insane. like, it's a very laid back environment too. Like everybody's just kind of having fun. So. Oh yeah. So there are these people doing the acro, and it was this like small guy first, and so I went up there. Um, no, actually, this girl spun me first. Her name's Tracy. She's a okay. small girl. What does it mean they spun you? Like, so she was my base, okay, right? Cool. On the on the ground, yeah. and I was Flying flipping around. around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. it was it was so cool. Yeah, I got a few pictures. Okay, really cool. Mm -hmm. I'm I, yeah, I'd be nervous to be the one getting spun. You're just up there, and I'm like hoping they catch me, kind of, you know. For real. Yeah, I'd rather be the base for sure. Mm. So. Let's talk about what you did during and after college. <coughs> um, so during college, it's been a while. Um, so I was a mechanical engineer. Um, um, otherwise, I mean, I was just a part of, I joined a fraternity my freshman year. Which, which I thought, one? Uh, Sig Epsilon. So Sigma Phi Epsilon. Mm -hmm. um, so I really enjoyed that experience. I thought that was great. Um, it was a really great group of guys. Thought, like mo pretty much all my best friends are from that group now. Um, but otherwise I was part of a bunch of random clubs and stuff uh, throughout my time there, whether it was fraternity related or elsewhere like SGA and stuff like that. Um, I, I don't know, other than diving into like specific positions and stuff I held, college was great, loved it, super fun. Um, but then after college, I went and worked at Deloitte Consulting as I, or manager consulting firm, which was Deloitte. And did two years there. I uh, didn't really find what I was looking for. Uh, it felt kind of big. I love the people. Like, so a lot of my good friends are also from kind of like my star class there. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't exactly what I was looking for. I didn't really get to learn as much about business as I would, as I was hoping to. I learned more. I kind of how to format PowerPoint slides and mess around with Excel spreadsheets and stuff. Right. So left that in February. Um, and then by coincidence, it, the timing worked out really well. Two weeks later, I found out that I was going to be on the bachelorette. So basically a month after I quit, I was on a plane to LA, uh, which worked out really well because if I had had the job, I probably wouldn't have been able to do it. Oh, wow. Yeah. You didn't know so at the I, time you were quitting that you were going to be on. So I pretty much had already planned on quitting that job like a year before I did. Mm. And I knew I wanted to quit around that two year mark. A year after starting. <laughs> yeah. And so um, basically I knew like a year in advance I was going to quit around then. About a month before I actually put in my, or like three days before I put in my last day notice, um, I applied to the show. So I was kind of in talks with them mm. while I was finishing out my last like two or three weeks on the, at, at work. Right. But, um, I didn't get the call until like a week or two after I had actually like left my last day and was like totally out. Mm -hmm. Um, so the timing worked out well. It's a good thing that my two years hit right before the show starts filming. Um, so I did that. I was gone for, you know, a while there. And then, um, the reason I quit was to start a brother or start a company with my brother. So once I got back from the show, pretty much started doing that again. Mm -hmm. And so now we've been doing that for almost a year. Let's pause on that and because yeah. we'll get into yeah. it and come back to the show and talk more about The Bachelorette, yeah. as I'm sure so many of the listeners want to hear about. Yeah, well, yeah, there's and some, I, I haven't really done yeah, like I research talked to you much. Yeah, about which, it, yeah, which season were you on? So I was on Hannah Brown season, which was the, the most recent Bachelorette season. Hannah Brown, uh, oh, Hannah Brown, Hannah Brown, Hannah Brown's the name of the okay, uh, of the she went to Alabama, yeah, I yeah. think. Yeah. I saw her at the Alabama, yeah. Georgia game, I think. Yeah, so she was, uh, oh, was she there? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so she was Alabama. She was a bachelorette that season. She had been on the previous bachelor season, which was Colton's season. Typically, it's somebody from the most recent season. So, like, the upcoming bachelor that airs in January is Peter. Um, and so he was one of the guys on my 
my season mm. with Hannah. I'm, I'm glad I did it. Uh, it was a really cool experience. Uh, met some really great guys. Still friends with a lot of them. Ran the Chicago Marathon with a couple of them back in October. Mm. Um, and I'm excited to see what happens with Peter's season. Nice. Yeah. So how many people were on your season? Uh, there were 30 guys. 30? On the first night. And then it, it quickly gets cut down. Like that, That's the first night. And then after the first night, there's only like 22 left. And then you kind of whittle on down. So there's kind of, if you've ever watched the show before seen a couple seasons so there's kind of a formula to it it'll be like 30 then after one night there's 22 and then you kind of start to kick off like four at a time then all of a sudden it becomes like three and then maybe only kicking off like one person gotcha until you gotcha yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and where how long did you last so i was on until the beginning of episode five only because it kind of went over typically it would have been the end of episode four mm-hmm. so about four weeks on the show which was fun for to watch and for like Mainly, I was excited for my friends and family to watch. Like, I thought it'd just be really funny for them to to get to see that. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get as much airtime as uh, as I would have hoped. So, it was more of a my friends were more lo- more like playing a really complicated Where's Waldo game, where they're trying to like <laughs> find me the whole time, um, and you randomly see me in the background or something. What is that? Yeah. What that is? yeah. Um, so, but I think all my friends and family really enjoyed that. So, um, mm-hmm. I had fun during filming and watching it. I think they enjoyed it after. So I didn't end up with her, but I think everybody, everybody wanted that situation of, of just enjoying it. Absolutely. So what kind of doors has going on the show open for you? Not a whole lot, mainly just cause it wasn't really, it doesn't really align with like things I was trying to do in life anyway. Um, so like you could say like the. A door has kind of been opened to be like an influencer in a way, um, and I can make some money off my Instagram. I wasn't really that interested in that. Um, I am now currently working with a company on it, and honestly, I hate it. We can come back to this later, but I like do not like being an influencer. I'm like after this one, never again. I don't really? like it. Yeah, I just don't like the whole like like I'm, I guess I'm trying to figure out what I want to use my Instagram for, but I know what I don't want to use it for is advertising products. Really? That, like that like I don't really um it's something that I don't believe in because I actually really like it like it's I'm working with a sauna company I actually really enjoy the sauna it's a great time every time I go in but I just still I don't know I mean it's not the same like, one Matt works yeah, with is it yeah same one player and so I just I don't know I guess maybe I feel a little sleazy about it but also I just like I guess I just want to post stuff that I think provides value to other people and I just don't really feel like Posting some random ads that I'm getting paid for, like, really does that. So, unfortunately, I'm in a contract with them now. So, even though I really do like the sauna, I'll, fi- I'll finish out the contract and then I'll probably never do influencing again. So, really? so, you could say it opened that door, but it's kind of a door that I'm closing anyway. Wow. Um, other than that, I think what it's given me the ability for is like, with the company that my brother and I are working on and stuff like that, you know, networking can be pretty important and it just kind of, um, it gives me an avenue to kind of reach out to people, to, to DM somebody random and just, um, I think the, the higher your follower count typically, you know, it shows it on the, when somebody DMs you and it goes in your request, it shows like how many followers they have. I think the higher that number, the better the chance that they respond or at least mm-hmm. look at it. Um, and so it at least helps with that. So like I've messaged some mental health influencers and stuff like that because that's where our company the space we kind of play in. So um, it's allowed me to at least kind of have some conversations through Instagram that maybe I wouldn't have had before. Mm-hmm. So. Word. So let's dive into the company. What's the name? Yeah. So we call it Grove. Um, Grove. Really just because it's a nice sounding word. And that's mm-hmm. kind of, we want the company to, or we want like the whole environment of the platform to feel welcoming and comfortable and stuff. Um, because basically what we're trying to do is create a platform for mental health by First, allowing people to create support groups in virtual reality. Mm. Um, the reason being is that there's currently platforms like this out there, but they are either over desktop or FaceTime or uh, just like kind of anonymous messaging. And you don't really feel like you're like together actually in a group. You feel more like you're texting a group or something right. like that, um, which doesn't feel very intimate. And so we thought virtual reality- What, a group text isn't intimate? Yeah. <laughs> and, and you'd be amazed. I mean, but like a lot of people actually use these platforms and I think there will probably be a place for both of them, but we're hoping that this will hopefully, the people who currently like the chat features and stuff like that will maybe find even more benefit in the 
the intimate environment of more so mm-hmm. VR where you're still anonymous. Like your avatar looks totally different. Nobody knows who you are. Eventually we'll probably try to have some sort of voice modification if you want. Not not like what you hear on like uh, no, of course. movies, on spy movies where it's like incredibly deep and like not. It'll be like yeah. Siri, yeah. you know, or, Just change or, or Alexa. Bit. Yeah, exactly. Um, and hey so. Siri, Alexa, <laughs> play the Mr. Atlanta podcast. Oh, that'd be sweet if you got that working. Uh, you podcast. can. Oh, really? You literally oh, can say that. I'll try when I go home. You can do it on Spotify, you can do it on, on any of them. Okay, say, very cool. Play the podcast and it will. Okay. Tell That's one of the things that. I'm doing with this is creating an audio archive cool. of conversations, you know. Cool. I didn't exactly know what I was doing when yeah. I started, but I knew at least how to do it in the process. Cool. And so I have got it down to you know these three cameras now yeah. and screwing with the audio and So how does that even work? How do you um do you individually upload it to all those sites or is it you just put it on one platform and it pushes it to whatever, Spotify and wherever else you, you put podcasts? Yeah, so I have one hosting platform that will push it to all the big ones, and then I'll have to go through individually, upload it into YouTube, cool. Instagram, TV, which is new yeah. for me, putting them on there. Which I you saw it, and, and I need to do it more. I wanted to get you know more episodes under my belt before I start putting them out cool. on Instagram like that. Um, nice. And so now, like fifteen, I'm feeling pretty comfortable with it. Nice. Okay, so this will be on your IGTV. Absolutely, yeah. Cool. Um, for it. And then one of the uh, the things about this is you'll be able to say like, "Hey Siri, tune into the fifteenth minute or the part of Mateo and David's podcast is where they talk about movie? the Bachelorette." Okay. It's not there but now, they're, they're working on but it. it'll be there. Like yeah. it's technically, yeah, technology is sure. probably already absolutely sophisticated enough to do that. Yeah, I mean, I can pretty much say. Hey Siri, play the Rose Scott NPR, yeah. you know, specific episode yeah. channel. So it's getting pretty close. Yeah. And they're always listening, so yeah. might as well embrace it. Yeah, that'll be nice when you can just say uh whatever, yeah, like skip to the part that they talk about, whatever, and it, and it knows where to go. Because other times like people have told me like, oh yeah, you gotta listen to the part of the podcast where they they like they mention whatever and you're like skipping through like oh, right. where is that? Like how far do I have to go? Um, yeah, technology is something that really excites me for sure. Oh yeah. Especially since my brother and I are in the VR space, like and mental health space, mm-hmm. VR, since it's such a new technology, we kind of keep up with a variety of the technologies coming out and yeah, we think the twenties are going to be, they're going to be wild. It's oh, going to be a lot of change. I'm sure. Yeah. In Kangdam, which is like the buckhead of South Korea. Really? Yeah. Okay, cool. In Seoul. And, um, <laughs> he's like one of 10 partners over there helping develop handsets, hardware. Really? Um, For like sets there or mm-hmm. different ones, right? Oculus. Oculus, cool. All right. Um, yeah, I'll have to check it out. Cause I know, I mean, we have Oculus headsets, so like I can probably do a decent amount from home, but I'm sure the environment is just a little bit different and you're kind of with your friends and stuff like that. Oh, absolutely. Nice. And I think it'd be a great test place. I mean. Well, yeah, yeah, I do remember, I think you and Somebody else was talking about that. Maybe we could even talk to like potential users there or something like that or advertising there or something. Absolutely. Yeah. So the owner of the VR bar, his name is Michael. He was a partner with McKinsey and co for cool. about 10 years. Um, and now he's a partner with Samsung and cool. Korea. In Kangdam, which is like the buckhead of South Korea. Really? Yeah. Okay, cool. In Seoul. And um, he's like one of 10 partners over there helping develop handsets, hardware. Really? Um, For like Samsung VR headsets and stuff? And so something that he did was took the influence uh, and the culture that Korea has with renting out karaoke rooms. Mm -hmm. Um, I spent a few weeks out there. Oh, is that kind of how it's laid out in Reverie? Mm -hmm. Like you rent out like a little VR room? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, exactly. Okay. So I mean, every room has its own TV, <clears throat> headset. I just imagine like an open bar with kind of headsets around. So I was confused on how that works. Okay. Yeah. That makes much more sense of how this place is laid out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been to the karaoke bars, yeah, where you have your own room and stuff like that. So it's not a closed door though, and it's glass. So you could see through all of them. Okay. Can't hear too much, it's a little bit. Yeah. But you know, it's it's this incredible concept and it's cool. it's unique in its own that there's nothing like that in America, Atlanta, really okay. anywhere. 
Okay, that makes sense. And the fun. vibes are, are great. They're having yeah. a... Um... Yeah, so they're having this Juice World party uh, cool. in remembrance of them, and it's a Wednesday, but we'll be lit. Yeah. So that's tonight? Mm-hmm. Oh, really cool. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Well, yeah, I'll have to... The co-owner, Vince, is a good friend. And so, I have the hookup for you, man. Nice. It's not too bad. Definitely yeah. come through if you want. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. I, definitely now that you describe it more as like the kind of the karaoke rooms and stuff like that, mm. I, I definitely am more enticed to go check it out now. Because before, I thought it was a random bar with just like headsets going no, around. No, bro. Which, which they, thousands of people go through there. Cool. And I mean, a lot of people go to play the game. So, if there yeah. was like... And at your app on these screens, yeah. you might check it out. I mean, yeah. they're literally like paying to do it. Yeah. They go home and they do it for free. Yeah. Uh, what's the platform? What? Yeah. So I guess I haven't described it too well yet. Uh, so basically. Well, I haven't asked that much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, basically, it's just an app in, in virtual reality where you can go in, you'll make your own avatar. Um, so you can make it look however similar or different as you'd like to you. Um, and then basically you kind of go into, we call it like your home. It's like a floating house in the sky. It's like you're just kind of surrounded by these clouds and stuff. And you can basically look up groups that are currently running, or if there's not one, then you can create your own. So um, if somebody's struggling with anxiety, they could go to the little like area that we have and type in anxiety and see all the groups that meet for that. And it'll show the days and the times that they do. And you pick the one for your schedule that works mm-hmm. the best. And then you can join them when, um, the time comes for that meeting to, to be live. And then um, from there, we'll have a variety of environments that basically you can sit in. So right now, a support group, like I went to an AA meeting to see what it was like and just try to like learn from it and, and see how they run. Cause obviously that's one of the most well-known and I would say successful support groups nationally and internationally. Oh yeah. Um, I've been. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so you know what it's like. And so, you know, they're kind of, the environments that they can meet in are just constrained to whatever they can find. So maybe it's a church or maybe it's like a small um, little space that they're able to rent out or something like that. Um, in virtual reality, the environment can be whatever you want. So mm-hmm. we built out like a little campfire um, environment in the mountains. So you're all like sitting around the campfire and like, if you've ever like just had a bonfire or something with, at a friend's place, you find that like you all sit around and you'll just kind of like watch the fire move. It doesn't take a lot of thought. You just kind of watch it. It's interesting. And you'll just kind of keep talking. Like it just kind of like lulls you into like a sense of comfort and you can just easily talk oh, yeah. is what we find. So we thought that was a good first environment where hopefully we kind of emulate that feeling. But in the future, you can be on a snow capped mountain with the Northern lights above you. And maybe that would be a similar feel instead of watching the fire. Maybe you kind of like look at the Northern lights and talking or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so now it can be whatever you want. Like you don't have to drive an hour outside the city to like get in the mountains and like and have a campfire and have a really good like group chat or something. You can just pop on the headset and you're there. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's basically how the platform works as, as of today. So we'll launch that in February. So it hasn't launched yet, um, but it will be coming up. We're almost done. Ooh, exciting. Yeah, yeah. So it should be it should be fun. All right. So expand on it. Like, are you gonna have? Doctors or yeah, so initially so that's counselors. Kind of, yeah, that's kind of the biggest question we get um, right now. And so at the moment, we don't have any. There won't be any professional therapists or anything like that in the in the support groups for a couple of reasons. Um, obviously, if a professional therapist would like to host the group, they totally can, but it wouldn't be in the role as a therapist. The idea is for it to be like AA, where everybody's equal. Um, there's not necessarily a leader. There is kind of somebody who's running the meeting, but they aren't higher than anybody else or anything like that. You know, they're, they've dealt with the same problems just like anybody else. Um, and they're, they're equal to everybody. So, um, we, in the future, we'll maybe try to incorporate more professionals and stuff like that. But also right now, if we do that, you then you start having to worry about a lot more like HIPAA regulations yeah. and liabilities. Yeah, more liability. Um, the therapists probably want to be paid, and our idea right now is for it to be free, so we need to figure that out. Um, so we're hoping that we can build a good community like AA has has built, um, which that I think that will be the biggest struggle of really how do we make it feel like this communal feel where everybody's respectful and. Um, Which AA did you go to in Atlanta? It was in Atlanta. Uh, I can't remember where somebody else took me. So I got part of town. I want to stand near Buckhead. 
The triangle. Probably, yeah, it was a triangle. Piedmont, right? It was a triangle club, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, have you been to that one? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, go. that was my home group for a little while. There we go, maybe I, I almost could have seen you there then. Yeah, I I gave up drinking for two and a half years. Really? Um, from 25 to 27 and a half. Okay. I'm 31 now. Okay, cool. Um, and drink again, but yeah. yeah, for two and a half years, I just cut it out, wanted to see if I could. Yeah. Really just wanted to see if I could for like a month. Nice. Um, it's so you just good. kind of kept doing it. Yeah. That's kind of what happened to me. I cut it out for a diet experiment that I was doing for two months, and I was like, I don't really ever want to do it again. And I, I didn't really drink a lot beforehand, but I was just like, you know, like if you drink heavily, then the next day you feel crappy, which then, the, like, because you feel crappy, you don't get as much done, and because you don't get as much done, you maybe shame yourself for being, like, unproductive that day. Like, there's, like, a whole, like, for me, at least, there's, like, this whole, oh, like, no, do. And then, so, like, the third, you have, like, a third day of, of feeling <laughs> shitty from yeah. it because of the, the yeah. lack of, yeah. of execution the day before. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's kind of like, the, there was, like, a whole mindset that, like, seemed to get better, as well as, like, I also, I wasn't overweight. I didn't have a lot of weight to lose, but I stopped drinking, and uh, over the course of, like, three months or whatever, I lost, like, 10, 15 pounds. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I didn't realize I had 10, 15 pounds to lose. Um, so... Yeah, just, I felt better, got more done. Um, I recommend it for a lot of people. So you still don't drink? Uh, I drink every once in a while, but it's maybe like once every three months or oh, something wow. like that. Yeah, it's like very rare. Good for you. Um, and so, yeah, I just don't really enjoy it. But I, I, mean, I think a lot of people... It's poison. Would, I mean, yeah. it might be tasty, yeah. but it's definitely poison. Yeah. and I, I, I recommend I, marijuana. <laughs> I don't if, think much of that. If either. you if you need if you want something, yeah. it's yeah. it grows out of the ground. Yeah, it's natural. That's what I think. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people could benefit from cutting it out. Where I don't know what it is, but I feel like there's this mindset where I hear a lot of people make these jokes about like, oh, I'm never drinking again, or like, uh, oh, you know, I should stop drinking. There's kind of like this like mentality or, or this culture around like joking about how you shouldn't drink or how they should drink less but like they clearly aren't serious about it it's kind of just oh, like yeah. a joke or something oh, i don't yeah. really know what that mm, what that mentality is necessarily but i think if they actually did it and stopped drinking i think they would probably kind of enjoy it so oh, sure um but yeah you just feel a lot better it's important kind of your intentions or reasons behind yeah. why you do or don't yeah um, for me in particular when i did it um, people were like, do you have a problem? Like what, yeah. you know, you, you yeah, must be, you know, that, you know yeah. immediately it's like this stigma about it. And then they're also like, oh, well, I'm might not invite David or, you know, for this yeah. event because I don't want to make him feel uncomfortable or yeah, for sure. be, you know, in an impressionable environment. Yeah. And so that was something that was hard. Yeah. Um, yeah, people do immediately jump to that there must be something wrong or that you feel awkward around it. Absolutely. But, like, Which is not true because yeah. I was still out all the yeah. time. I, go to I was still running a tour bus company and hosting yeah. events and I was running for office during yeah. a part of it, like literally all the time. Yeah. And just didn't need to drink. And people are like, no, 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 you're drunk. Yeah. Especially girls. Like, yeah. this is a drunk girl. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're the ones that are, you know, drinking in themselves, right? Yeah. So they're in these types of feelings. And so they project on me like that. You, you, you're smiling and dancing. You yeah. must be drunk. Like there's no way yeah. that you could be happy yeah. without. I'm like, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I will say it is. It's way harder for me to get into a dancing mood without some a couple of drinks, and that has been challenging. Because I still I like I like going to clubs and stuff like that, and it's always like the first ten minutes. I'm like, oh, nobody's watching you. Nobody cares that you're a bad dancer. Just have fun <laughs> and dance. And like, like without a drink or two, it is very hard to be like, okay, you can get into this. And then, but eventually you kind of do it, and you're like, yeah, what? Like nobody, nobody, right. nobody's thinking about me. Nobody's watching me or anything like that. So, um, which they're all thinking about themselves. Yeah, and... that's that's what. There's a funny quote that I love. I can't remember where I heard it, but I thought it was so good. Where it was in your in your twenties, you worry about what others think about you. In your 40, 40s, you don't worry about what others think about you. In your 60s, you realize nobody was ever thinking about you to begin with. Mm. And I'm like, that's probably pretty accurate. So I'm going to hopefully try to jump to the 60s. There we go. Yeah. 
Well, uh, you say yeah, because I mean, you think about how, like a toy. Yeah. <laughs> you think about how much you think about yourself, and it's just like, because you have all these problems and goals and whatever. It's like, it, yeah, it is hard to, like, you don't spend nearly as much time thinking about like, every person you've met as you do yourself and what you're trying to do and stuff like that. And everybody else is the same. And but yeah, so we always worry about what others think about us because we think about us so much that they must be thinking about us that much, and they don't. So yeah, one of my favorite things in conversation with with new people or or old um, is, but particularly with new new girls, <laughs> is to not divulge anything about myself. Okay. Not even my name if I don't have to. And just let them I usually do most formal situations, any kind of like yeah. meeting people for events with yeah, organizations I'm a part of. Yeah, yeah, like I'm hey, I'm David Oil Brown. What's up? Nice, thanks for coming out. Good to see you. Da, da, da. Um but if it's something somebody I'm kind of interested in, you gotta take a different mentality a little bit and not divulge all that and ask the questions. Yeah. Like almost an interview. Yeah. And like on a first date, you yeah. know, I keep the ball. Yeah, you and, just keep asking. And my opponent's court, and literally just ask, ask, ask. Yeah. Um, and that mind fucks a lot of people because nobody does that. Yeah, nobody yeah, actually, and then genuinely cares. Yeah. And listens wholeheartedly. You know, like yeah. I love that. You know, this whole forty-five minutes so far, we haven't even looked or thought yeah. about our phones. And you're always like that. You're pretty good at it. But you yeah. know, you use your phone, the internet, when you have to. Yeah. Get on it. Do it a hundred percent, and then get the fuck off. Yeah. That's yeah, I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah. I know you're good, good with that. Yeah, that's what one thing I've realized recently is like, so I'll be working at my desk, and I used to just leave my phone right next to me, which was such a mistake because it, it vibrates, whatever, and you you feel drawn to it, you see it light up, whatever. I realized if I just put it just out of arm's reach, like if it, if it's just across the room or whatever, ten feet away, I'll hear it vibrate and I'll look over and be like, look at that. Cause I just like don't want to like walk over there necessarily, and you get so much more done just mm-hmm. by like putting it like an extra five feet away or something. Yes. Like that. Yeah, yeah. That's something just, everybody can hear probably. I yeah. know I could. Otherwise, it's just so addicting. It's so hard to like if it's in your pocket, if it's next to you, it's just so easy to check. You know. Uh, Absolutely, all those endorphins yeah. that are released, serotonin whenever you're interacting with your phone. Exactly. Um, it's just dopamine, dopamine, dopamine all the time we have this thing in our pocket so powerful so when technology introduces implantable devices yeah you're gonna adapt yeah it's such a it's like such an interesting idea to think if we will improve ourselves with technology like physically improve ourselves and so i would think i think it'll come out and there will be initially a population that is a large majority of the population that's scared of it but there will be some people that want to do it. I think like the early adopters, the classic mm-hmm. people that maybe are just like really into sci-fi or whatever, they'll want to do it. And if it does work and they're immediately much smarter, think faster, whatever it is, they would get such a benefit that I think people would feel like it's unfair and they need to do it too. Absolutely. And I would, and I would say it's analogous to the phone. I would say the phone isn't implanted in us, but I basically, you know, maybe there's a minute of latency but I basically have access to the information of the world. If it was implant, implanted in our brain, it would be instantaneous. Right now, it takes a minute because I have to Google it, go to Wikipedia, or whatever. But it's essentially the same thing. It'd be like if it was just a really long latency for, for your brain to receive it from the plant. Um, and you think about people that don't have phones now, it would be such a, a drawback of not having all that information, not having um, the ability to, to connect and do work wherever you are and stuff like that. And you see people like going back to flip phones these days, but I think more people would do that if there wasn't such a negative aspect of like, now you can't get work done on the go, or you can't connect with people on the go, or you can't have access to the world's information. Um, you can't capture yeah. and and receive high quality content. Yeah. And so it, it's just such a benefit to have it that while there are drawbacks, we've kind of accepted it as standard. And I Absolutely. think that we will see the same thing with the plants in our brain or body or whatever, if it does provide that much value. People will just like have to do it because they're like, well, you know, I was working with you three months ago, we were the same level of employee and now you're CEO because you're like 10 times smarter than anybody else in the company because you got this brain implant. 
Oh yeah. Like, you'd be like, well, maybe I should get one too. It'll probably be this whole, on, on the regulation of employment side, this whole thing that you're either like tier one or tier two. You either have the chip or you don't. Yeah. And I'm definitely gonna get it. I already know. Like, yeah. I'll be an early adapter. You wanna be the guinea pig? For sure. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, as long as I can find a way to not have heavy EMTs um, radiating, you know, I love my Apple Watch. It's been one of the biggest yeah. accountability measures that I have to keep me with 10,000 steps per day yeah. and sleeping right. But the EMTs do scare me a little yeah. bit. You know, it's electromagnetic waves pulsing through from our phones and all these devices all the time. Yeah. It, um, it kills your cells, it kills your sperm, yeah. it kills a lot of important things. So uh, I had a friend, yeah, so there's that one of the this uh, girl I'm mentoring for Brawl for a Cause, yeah. Elizabeth, um, brought it up to me, or I guess she put it on her story like six months ago that sent me a, a study, a publication about it. Okay. Related to phones or Apple Watches or what? To all so any EMPs. sort of electric devices and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough because I mean, we as humans haven't been attached to stuff like this for that long of a time. You would say maybe when the first smartphone came out is when like just everybody has it, it's everywhere sort of thing. So we really can only study what it affects after I guess like twelve or thirteen years now. Mm -hmm. We don't know what it looks like after twenty after 30, after 40, whatever. So right. um, and it'd be the same thing with the, the brain implants. We'd be like, all right, we studied it for six months. It looks good to go. But what does that mean in 40 years? Uh, I don't know. Like, True. do those things eventually corrode and like that could leak something into your brain? You don't. So what you know about Neuralink? Um, I saw their announcement that came out about that they just have a, like a much faster and precise machine to input it, which was kind of the main um, innovation there but that yeah basically now they can get a bunch more nodes in your head so you'll be able to control more than what we have been able to do in the past mm -hmm. so um it'll be interesting to see where that goes see when they start like testing that out and stuff i think their plan is to start on people who really even if it doesn't work it's still kind of the best option like there's not really a better option anyway um so it'd be interesting to see what the results are there how do you feel about elon musk I like him. Yeah, I think he gets he gets an unfair amount of just negative talk. I think in my mind, I don't know how you I feel about him. Yeah, cool. I think I mean, I makes, think he's one of the yeah. people that are gonna save humanity. Yeah, he's. I think he. Um, I think a lot of people. Yeah, they crap on him, but I think he, while he makes some mistakes here and there, I mean, he's just like working like crazy to make a change that he really believes in and you can see it in just like a ver like in all his different companies and stuff he's just oh that's a problem i'm going to solve it that's a problem i'm going to solve it that's a problem i'm going to solve it and so people like to you know make fun of him at times or whatever but i mean at least he's trying to solve issues absolutely like, like crazy big issues i feel like people more along our generation yeah get it you know yeah like i'd say kids younger than us Pretty much probably all get it, and then you know, probably yeah. up into like the 30s or 40s, maybe a little bit less. You know, people yeah. are like more understanding of Elon Musk. Yeah. You know, sure, he's a billionaire and been in PayPal, but he's also yeah. done all these other things. And on top of making electric cars a reality, yeah, um, during <laughs> the house, the, the economic crisis, yeah. right at the beginning of the recession, is when Tesla started, yeah. you know. Bad timing. Uh, have you seen any documentaries about him on YouTube? I haven't, no. There's oh, some good man. ones out there. Dude, so I've been I've been paying for YouTube premium for about nine months. And cool. um it's I I, I, I I might get rid of Netflix. Like it's really? so like good. That much? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, and, and and because I torrent download everything and it's really yeah. just like now that I have enough space on the devices that I watch it on, yeah. um it's uh it's no reason not to just download it because you don't have to stream, you know? Yeah. I kind of don't like streaming. I'm sure it's good to not have to upload it onto your device. Yeah. But yeah, dude, so you can find this incredible content from YouTube yeah. Premium. Okay. Um, I'm on like, a family plan, I pay like two twenty five a month. They have like exclusive content for premium members? It's or? the same content okay. without okay. ads. Oh, yeah, yeah. Without ads. and 
just because there's no ads, you really spend time on it, yeah. and then it starts to learn you. <laughs> yeah, so it, it starts, starts to, to follow, and so I like it. Just knows. Yeah, like, it knows what you want to see. What I want to see, and it's new content that is super valuable. Yeah, and informative, yeah. important, yeah. suppressed news. Yeah, and it's like the number one stuff that that I am inspired by. That yeah. I want to talk about. That I want to look at. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, something I highly recommend. Okay, cool. I'll check it out. Mm-hmm. Um, I've did, and so I've watched all like probably all these six different hours on on different Elon Musk on Elon Musk documentaries. Yeah, okay. okay, you probably know more about them than I do. Oh, a lot. Okay. Um, but no, I'm I'm definitely a big fan. Um, Has he written books? Not that I know. Of. I don't know. I don't think so. Um, I don't know if a lot of those like guys that you. There's like top tech guys that you hear about. I think I don't know if many of them have made books yet. I feel like they probably like will do that in the future, but right now he sure as hell doesn't need to. I'm sure doesn't have the time. They're so so laser focused on other Mm. stuff that yeah. Um, But yeah, I'm I'm definitely excited to see what happens with Neuralink. Uh, Excited to see what happens with his with SpaceX, Tesla, all that sort of stuff. Mm. AI in the future, which he has like kind of a hand in. So the boring. Company. The boring company. It's pretty funny. Yeah. It's um, one of my favorite feats yeah. that he's doing. Yeah. This underground tunnel from LA to San Fran. Yeah. I'm talking about a little bit. Little bit. How much has he done? I mean, how much of that is done? I just have, I heard I it was like, like, like a, a little quarter of the way. Yeah, a quarter of the way. Oh, yeah. It might be more. Um, yeah. I know it was like 10%. Cool. Fuck, like a year ago? So. Okay. I guess, yeah, you probably. Nobody will probably hear about it until it's done. Then yeah. they'll be like, there's a tunnel. Like, go check it out. Go drive on it. Um, Dude, he's going to solve. Then. The reason he gets flack is because he smoked a blunt on Joe Rogan's podcast. People were upset about and that. He's, you know, he has a high government security yeah. clearance. So, that, yeah. like, the only legal technical part is that it's federally illegal to do it. Even though he's in yeah. California, we can smoke marijuana. Yeah. Um, but dude, there's no, there's only articles about it that like that day, yeah. that week, and then there's People nothing else. It, yeah. it did make shares go down of different stocks and, yeah. and this and that. But fuck it, like yeah. let him, let it go down, bro. Yeah. Like Elon Musk is only gonna survive yeah. and and continue to go through if he needs to invest his own personal money into the companies that he owns, yeah. which he will. He does right. He yeah. he will, and they will. Yeah. It's difficult to turn a hundred dollars into a thousand. Yeah. But it's inevitable to turn a million dollars into 10. Once you go high enough. You invest that money, yeah. it returns. It just keeps going back. Yeah. yeah. I, I can't remember if I heard that quote from, but I've heard the same thing. Yeah. Do you watch a show called Explained? Mm-hmm. Maybe it was on there? On, on yeah, that's, that's where I saw it. I think, yeah. And it's talking about the new billionaires of the world or that's like what it was it was on the billionaires yeah yeah i've seen every episode probably three or four times really okay yeah. i haven't seen them all yeah. but i did watch the billionaires one that's what that quote you can just burn through like 15 to 20 something yeah, minutes. Quick. it's nice it's quick and that theme song oh my god i have to remember the theme song i haven't watched it in a little bit dude oh it's uh i'm just gonna pull it up because it's that good and it's actually what i want my podcast do you have like a theme song or any sort of Um, music? I have a couple audio tracks that okay, some cool. friends have sent me. And so I need to, I think I might do it for this one. Cool. Heck yeah. All right. So I'm. Um, oh, okay. I remember it. Yeah. It, is, it is really good. Diamond, forged by nature and crafted by man. It may be a cliche to say that yeah. this is rich soil, but this time it's literally true. It's, yeah, it, it isn't just like a nice, like, just mm-hmm. that crap that you like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's so powerful, dude. It's like a little creepy, yeah. a little eerie, but yeah. also like wholesome yeah. and exciting yeah, kind of all at the same time. Bit. Yeah, it pumps you up and also pushes you down. Like, yeah. you know, makes you a little scared, but excited. Yeah. Man, I love it. I love it. No, that would be, yeah. If you could come up with something similar to that, that would be good. Mm. Did you, are the tracks that your friends sent you similar-ish or? Um, they're kind of along that same. Cool. Cause I, I sent them that originally. Um, I have so many friends that make music nice. and are like also engineers cool. that create beats. And so, nice. um, I, I really just need to get like Curtis to do it. This guy named Curtis yeah, Williams, he can, he can literally like, he can make that a minute. Nice. Yeah. 
Oh, I, I, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, he's like, on there. he had over a million hours played on Spotify. Really? Sure. Yeah. Really cool. And he's just like this Atlanta homie. Everybody knows him. He's going to be on the podcast soon. He just makes beats or does he? He, he makes music too. He raps. Cool. He sings. Oh, okay, um, really cool. Yeah. And he's, he's, yeah. he's, I posted him on my, in my, um, on my page on Instagram. Yeah. So you've probably seen him before. I don't have to check him he's out. Ev- he's everywhere. Like he's, all right, good for him. Yeah, That's yeah. awesome. So as a, do you know, as a, and maybe since you put some podcasts on there, does it, like, what all does it notify you about as a, like, a creator on Spotify? So obviously, Curtis got to see that he has a million hours played. Um, does it show you, like, it shows me, like, my number one artist and stuff like that. Does it show you anything like that? Like, you I'm sure, like, in podcast. advanced analytics, yeah. Okay. Oh, for the podcast? Well, podcast or Curtis's um... music. I just would, I'd just been yeah, I'm, my I'm sure that all artists get detailed analytics. It might not be too thorough, a, a yeah. part of, you know, how many minutes each track yeah. was listened to, which ones were the most popular. Yeah. Um, okay, interesting. Yeah, there's like that whole creator yeah. side I know nothing about. You can always implement cookies on people, though, um, and trackers. That's true. Yeah. Through your Spotify or just other sites? Um, so you usually can do it through a website, yeah. your own website, but I feel like eventually you'd be able to do it through social media sites. If I not think, already. Yeah, I, mean, I think, I don't know. I never thought about that. Salesforce, that. I'm sure does it. And I mean, when they're tracking and selling your, yeah. <clears throat> what you're talking about in real time, yeah. you know, that's like a, such a. Interesting. Notorious and real thing. You know how you're like talking to somebody about something and yeah. then you see a sponsored post? Yeah. yeah. You're like, I have never Googled that this. Out. Right. Yeah. You're like, what? Yeah. Um, when I first started noticing that, then. Yeah, you're like, okay, so that. it's listening. Yeah. Uh, that's an interesting idea of in social media. If like a, cre- if a creator was able to put cookies on that. I wonder if they would allow that in the future. Uh, so my fitness routine right now is kind of all over the place. It's a little bit random. Um, for the longest time, I was just like a weightlifter. I just like going to the gym and, you know, classic weightlifting routines and stuff. Um, I remember like a year ago, one of my friends, I think, was saying something about like, oh, would you ever want to run a marathon? Because I would run like three miles here or there and stuff like that. And I was like, no, marathon's way too long. I don't want to do that. Um, and then come July of this past year, I started training for a marathon and did my first marathon in October. So, um, so then it kind of became a little bit more lifting with running. Mm-hmm. Uh, ultimately, my leg is seemingly messed up from the marathon. Plus, I did a month later, I did an ultra marathon. Um, so I'm having a little trouble running. I did two miles the other day and it held up. So I'm trying to like... What's get, wrong with the leg? It just seems like the IT band's messed up. Which so yeah, so I went to a running shop and they, the person there was telling me usually an IT band problem will be a, due to a lack of strength in your hip. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, okay, I mean, that kind of makes sense. It's basically just the hip muscle connects down to the IT band, which connects to your knee. So um, that muscle is probably just not strong enough. And so the band was kind of making up for that. Um, and then like last week, I think, I was just looking at myself in the mirror and I noticed that my right hip, which is the supposedly the one that should be weaker because that's my IT band that's having trouble was like noticeably bigger but like in a stronger defined look so I was mm-hmm. like okay so clearly my left hip is a weaker one but that's not the one having it's a problem. different part yeah so I'm like maybe it's not my like hip so do you do much yoga I don't do a lot of yoga I do try to stretch at night though just in general um so I here's one to- of the biggest things that you can do this is like a medicine ball, kind of. Um, that's good to roll around. This is a lacrosse ball, and this yeah. is the best thing in the world. I do need to go to lacrosse ball. I, I have three of them. I keep one in my car, nice. one in my living room, and one in my back. I feel like it's this would be relaxing. That would, that's be not, that would be painful. <laughs> but dude, you literally get down on it, no, and sure. you just roll, and you know, I've been yeah. running like five to 15 miles yeah. almost every day. Literally always on this ball yeah. for like one to three hours oh, every geez. day, just, you know, on my phone, yeah, just rolling around. digesting, eating, cool. whatever. Yeah, like, or after eating, I'll do it. And it's it's crazy how many things yeah. it releases in your body. Yeah. And it's like a massage therapist and a chiropractor yeah, sure. all in one, yeah. you know? 
Um, That's what I do have a foam roller and a tennis ball that I use, but I need the like, rock balls obviously ball. noticeably, noticeably so, harder. harder. Yeah. So, um, so I do think that I have been trying to roll that out. Um, we'll see. So I'll try to get back into that. But um, I just did, I signed up for class pass last week, mm. and so I've been doing a variety of classes there. I'm, I've been trying to like research different ways that different like regiments or movements and stuff that other people kind of yeah, do. Yeah, and then, do you know, strength classes. training for sure. Exactly. Strength and body weight training. <laughs> exactly. Really good. So, so yesterday, so I've been trying to do like a variety of things. So like yesterday I did the mega reformer, which I've never done before. What's so that? Mega reformer. It's like, I think it's similar to the Pilates machine. It's basically like the thing that slides back and forth mm. uh, and you just kind of do a workout on this machine basically. Uh, today I did bar, which is more of like a yoga, uh, this one was a little bit more high intensity than yoga typically is, but some like yoga and flexibility and strength sort of stuff. Today, or, on a bar? Uh, sometimes, yeah. Some of it was holding the bar, some of it's not. Um, I haven't done bar yet. Yeah, I yeah. Today was my first time, and then today, tonight, I'm excited. I have this thing called kangaroo bounce, um, which it, it basically what it looks like is you have like what looks like a ski boot essentially on your feet, and under the ski boot is basically in the shape of. Uh, like the profile of a football but they're just like little bands like it's hollow in the middle so you can imagine i'm imagining it kind of springs and i think we're just going to like do workouts on like jump around probably do like one-legged hops or something it's, i think it's a very killer leg workout that's awesome yeah so but uh, but like i'm just really interested in fitness overall and want to do more in that industry so mm -hmm. right now i'm kind of just doing research on um a variety of like fitness classes and stuff like that to see like then I'll go watch like all the P90X videos and stuff like that to see what they do um but yeah so that's kind of my workout schedule right now it's kind of solid oh yeah yeah that's by far the best thing that someone will recommend yeah. um that knows what they're talking about is diversify yeah. Yeah, shock your body yeah. into so many different ways yeah. And all the different stuff. That's why I, I can't just run as much as I yeah. I like to. But yeah, I wouldn't want to be just a runner. I love. I've been seeing your stories, you know, yeah. since you've been uh, training for the marathon and all through it. And I was just yeah. like, dude, this guy just ran like twenty something miles, yeah. like Isn't on it, a Tuesday. What? Yeah. What? Like it's crazy how your body and the times of day. We usually run super early. Oh, yeah. Well, because so when I was training, it was the summer. Now I would, I would probably try to do like the afternoon on a Saturday or something, but it was pretty much the summer, so it was so hot. So I would try to be running by 5 a.m. That way I can be done by like 6 or by 7 or 8 because after that it's just like, I mean, it's just too hot to run yeah. 20 miles. Um, now it'd be a little better. So now I'd probably have like a hat and some gloves and just run when the sun's out because it's a little mm -hmm. warmer then. Um, but yeah, but yeah, people always think they can't run that far. Or that it'd be hard to, and it is, but you'd be amazed with how your body just gets used to it eventually. Oh, like, yeah. The first time I did 20 miles, it just, it just destroyed me. Like, I could I could hardly walk. I literally, on mile set 19, was crying because it hurt so bad. And I was like, he just has to get to 20. You have to get to 20. I think it was a combination of the pain and I think the amount of, like, hormones and, uh, and stuff that was flowing through my body because my body was so confused. I think it was also in a very like emotional state at that point. So it was a little different. But then a couple weeks later I do 20 miles and like I finish it was hard. I finish it and like an hour later I'm totally fine. I'm like able to bounce around, like Ooh, yeah. I feel like totally fine. Uh and so it's crazy how your body just kind of conditions you just gets used to, to be it. able to do yeah. that, right? It gets faster at flushing out the lactic acid buildup, it gets stronger, uh, it gets more efficient, it just kind of like it's beautiful it just it what out. the body can do, but yeah. especially if you eat a good yeah, you get a good diet to work off of yeah. What is your diet nutrition regimen? Um, so I don't have anything crazy to be honest. Like I eat, I would say fairly well. Um, like I'll I'll typically have a fruit smoothie in the morning, um, as my first meal. Then I'll have oatmeal with some peanut butter. Um, then typically I'll try to do my workout after that, so I have a protein shake after. Then I'll have maybe like four eggs and either some toast or just the eggs themselves. And then I have a variety of snacks I'll usually pull from. So it might be like tuna sandwich, peanut butter jelly sandwich, something like that. And then usually I'll have dinner, which may be some sort of pasta or chicken or something. And then uh, finish off with some snack at night, which mm. can vary. Um, however, like people will ask me for nutrition advice and stuff. And 
my biggest advice isn't necessarily what I eat, but like how I eat, where I eat so consistently that I easily know, like I don't have to count calories because it doesn't really matter how many calories I'm eating. I know that my body's at a stable weight and this is what I have always eaten. So it's mm-hmm. obviously that's kind of like whatever those calories are, that's how I maintain my current weight. If I want to gain weight, well then I just add something in. Maybe I add in a little bit extra tuna, tuna in my tuna sandwich or something. If I want to lose weight, maybe I cut that peanut butter jelly sandwich. So just like it ends up like I don't even have, have to Have you seen the documentary it. The Game Changers? I haven't heard about it though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, I heard about it on the Joe Rogan podcast in a uh, negative way. Yeah? What did <laughs> yeah. they say? Um, that's the one that was all about being vegan and stuff like that, right? Uh, they were talking about just like poor data, um, science or cherry picking data or like stuff like that. So I need to watch the actual documentary, but that's why that I heard of it from that. Podcast. One of the best ways I can quickly negate what Joe Rogan said is... Have you listened to the Joe Rogan podcast or, the, or that episode? Not that episode, um, but probably like 150 of his podcasts. Pretty good. Are about 150 of Aubrey Marcus's also. Cool. Got a co-founded on it. Cool. One of the big sponsors or influences of me into creating my podcast. Nice. One of the people that taught me the pink Himalayan salt with cool. lemon in my water. Yeah. Um, I put some in I yours. Can taste it. Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got to the bottom of like, ooh, it's salty. <laughs> ooh, yeah, yeah. You gotta happen? shake it up, right, right, right. But it it makes it addicting. It's yeah. one of the biggest things that I've adopted to make me. Interesting just feel so much better and drink like 200 to 300 fluid ounces of water a day. Cool. This is 40 ounces and I will go through this four, three to, to six times. So three, time, three times. times would be a gallon, right? Mm-hmm. And then anything more than that's over a gallon, cool. Yeah, so two and a half is a hundred ounces, which is, you know, the recommended yeah. daily dose of water, but it's just so fucking addicting with yeah. that salt it's and the lemon. Yeah. And it's so, and I, I really, like smush the lemon up to make like yeah. a little bit of consistency yeah. particles yeah. from the lemon being there. Yeah, I saw a little bit of pulp in there. Oh, right. Oh my God, dude. Is that, is that, is that the main thing that you recommend in people's diets that you do is the, the lemon and I'd and say salt? the first, um, yeah, first and foremost, water is the most important thing, you know? Sure. Um, but secondly, it's to eat more fruit. Cool. Then veggies. Yeah. And eat more fruit than veggies or fruit and veggies? Fruits are the most powerful and important food that we have. It has the highest vibrational energy and the most fiber. It has fructose, not sucrose, gotcha. right? Fructose is what's in corn. Gotcha. Sucrose is what's in fruit. Gotcha. Every single cell in your body can digest fruit sugar. Only your liver can digest fructose. Gotcha. So. There's a lot of extra harm. I like what you were saying about what you eat and also what you don't eat. Yeah. Um, that's a big part of it. Cutting out sodas yeah. and bullshit has been yeah. huge. Grains, so, bread yeah. is literally just like paste yeah. inside of your body. I've adapted, as my listeners know, and you do yeah. also, a vegan, raw, vegan, plant-based diet. Cool. I'm about 11 months strong. Really? And it's been the biggest change of my entire life. Bigger cool. than stopping drinking. So I mean, drinking was huge too, right? Cool. So much more clarity, yeah. overall energy, nice. physical capacity, and, and, and happiness. Yeah. But this has been even big more so. Like Interesting. twice as much more impactful. Maybe three times. Cool. Just because I don't eat meat anymore. Yeah. The way that I can debase Joe Rogan real quick yeah. is to say, look at him. Look at these older men that are in shape, right? Yeah. 30, 40, 50. Yeah. But they have this extra layer yeah. of just thick. And maybe they have a six pack too, but yeah. they have this yeah. added layer because they've been eating meat for their lives, their yeah. whole fucking lives. And once you do that, you're putting all these extra toxins and hard to process chemicals in your body that are never gonna really go. Gotcha. Um, so what the uh, Game Changers talks about is veganism for athletes and cool. what eating meat does to your blood. Um, there's really, I think one of the screenshots of it is they show these test tubes of what your blood looks like yeah. eating meat and not eating meat, an extra orange that it has 
when you eat it, like immediately okay. after. So honestly, the biggest reason that I went vegan is because I'm scared as fuck about the effects of meat, yeah. processed food, processed meat, <clears throat> what happened on our body. It literally, getting cancer, getting a disease, Alzheimer's, that scares the shit out of me. Yeah. I don't want that happening to me. I want to be tip top, especially because once we can use Neuralink and yeah. you know cognitive consciousness yeah. in the future, I want to have the yeah. best temple yeah. possible. So, yeah. you know. Makes sense. I'll have to watch it when I go home. Yeah, because it's on Netflix, right? Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, I'll check it out when I go home. I remember watching a year or two ago, What the Health came out, I think, mm -hmm. a similar sort of idea. Yeah, that one's um a little bit more out there, um, maybe gotcha. not as accurate, but still one of the documentaries that made me go vegan. Cool. Yeah, that actually, that's yeah. the first one I watched right after I talked to one, my mentor. Nice. And he told me that he was two and a half years. Nice. Plant-based, chemical-free. Cool. Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah, I have to think about it. I went vegan for two months. This is part of the diet experiment where I cut out alcohol and then never kind of went back to it. But uh, I personally didn't feel a difference. So mm -hmm. I like, I went for two months. I felt the first two weeks I felt worse. And I think my body got used to it. And then I felt the same. And then I added it back in. And I was like, maybe when I had, like go back to my, like my first meal back was like a hamburger or a milkshake or whatever. I was like, surely I'll feel bad this week. I felt the same. So I was like, I, I believe that it has different effects for other people and stuff, but at least from like a uh, perceivable standpoint, I was, I was like, hmm, dang it. I wasn't able to feel anything different. So you just weren't eating right. That's sure. the biggest thing. Um, you got to eat the right foods. So the biggest thing that I can recommend is beans. I did eat a beans. lot of beans or red beans. Can I just, beans? I'm going to pull this out. I have just recently perfected the art of <laughs> beans. Black beans. Okay, black beans. And garbanzo beans, cool. chickpeas. Yeah. And basically you let them soak for a day. Yeah. That's what, yeah, the dried beans take so long to make. Too. You gotta let them soak for a whole day. No. Yeah. Um, and then after that, you slow boil them. You bring it to a boil. You put no salt in it at this time. If you do, it'll make the beans hard. Mm -hmm. um, you put in onion, garlic, pepper. I usually use those three things. While they're soaking? While they're soaking. Gotcha. After it's done soaking and it's going into the boil. Gotcha. So once you start cooking, as soon as it comes to a boil, you take it down to the lowest setting simmer. for two hours. You simmer it with the lid halfway off. Cool. And I don't think you're really supposed to stir the beans too much. I do a little. Um, and then the last 30 minutes, you go through and add the salt and the seasoning. Cool. And bro, it's literally like, it's, good stuff. it's so cheap. Yeah. And beans, it is super cheap. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. They're so good. Yeah. You can do anything with it. Yeah. So I've been cooking beets a lot oh, lately, I like which beans. you can also do a lot with. Yeah. Oh, man. And I try to eat them raw, you know, as much as possible. I mean, you have to cook the beans like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the beans the, raw. <laughs> right. The least amount of, of heating yeah. or cooling of your food is possible. Because as soon as you change the temperature, yeah. you kill nutrients. Gotcha. Just as simple as that. So those are principles that I've adapted to and cool. have done to my own life, trying to spread to my people and low key through this podcast. Cool. Um, and you like it? You I love it. Yeah. Obviously, I feel better it, than yeah. I ever had in my life. Good. And I think the reason that vegans get flack is because they feel so passionately about how yeah. they do that they want to share it with other people yeah. where they feel that way also. And you know, if, if you're not open to that, it's just yeah. not gonna happen. Yeah. And and I was like that for 30 years. I yeah. said, you're a vegan, you don't eat meat, you can't be as strong as me. It's, yeah. you, you just can't, you don't get the right protein. Yeah. Which is literally like, where where did the animals get the protein? Yeah. From from other fucking plants. Yeah. And it's just the middleman. Yeah. So. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I'm ready to go vegan again, but I'll think about it. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. So where did we meet? Uh, the first time was at Matt's thing, at uh, Broga, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, when did I come to that? The first one was... Like back in like May or something? First, I think it was the first week that he had it open to the public. Or oh, it was still kind of like friends. He just had like, a, he only had like three or four people the first time. Yeah. Um, and then that 
Saturday that we went. Okay. At, we went to yeah. Brady. We snagged yeah, yeah. out of high school. Yeah. Like, we just hopped the fence into the football field. Yeah. And yeah, um, it was like six of y'all were all on dating shows <laughs> who were there. Yeah, pretty good. Mark Quavo's. The secret still. <laughs> but, but that, yeah, it was funny all of a sudden finding, like I mentioned it, and they were like, yo, we're on a dating show. I was like, wait, really? Like, all you guys are also on a dating show? It was really funny. <laughs> David was yeah. also on one. His yeah, was four of them, I think. Mm-hmm. Wait, what was David on? I'm not sure. Big Love Island Oh, Big Brother? Big Brother? Okay, cool. Wait, David? Alexander? Does he come to Broga? Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah, I have never met he him. He shot it a couple times, too. Okay, cool. I've never met him, and I didn't know he comes to Broward because I haven't overlapped with him. But um, yeah, I messaged him a couple times on Instagram. We had like talked back and forth on Instagram before. Um, yeah, good okay, cat, cool. for sure. He's a cool guy? Oh, yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah, he's a good guy. Um, is Broward still going on? on so it Saturday? stopped um, about a month ago. It cool. started getting real cold. That's what, yeah, that's what ended up happening with my workout group, too, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just too cold, and mine was also at night, so it also was too dark. Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about your workout group. Yeah. Well, so it, I mean, it doesn't happen anymore. But yeah, it was every Wednesday at seven p.m. Uh, we meet up over in Piedmont Park, um, and we would basically do like high intensity partner sort of interval training, um, and it was fun. It was pull ups, push ups, sprinting, jogging, burpees, dips, whatever. They had a, a variety of like exercise equipment mm-hmm. there. They had that, that whole kind of setup there. Um, but it was fun. It started off the first time four people came, and I was like, dang, I was kind of hoping more people than that would show up. Uh, but then the next time it was like seven, and then it was 12, and then uh, we ended up at, at one point we had like close to 40 people there. Yeah, um, I started watching it, I guess. Yeah. No, I guess from the beginning. I don't know. Had yeah. you started it before you came to Broga? Um, I'm trying to remember. I didn't start until like July. I'm yeah. trying to remember when the first time I came to Broga was. Uh, it, I guess it was probably somewhere very close around, around there. there. Um, I remember pretty much seeing the... Or I think Matt came to the first one of the first ones, and I met Matt through Broga, so I must have come to Broga first. Word. Uh, and then started it shortly after. Um, but it was fun. I mean, it was a classic it was a classic case of, like, like, just don't expect a lot at first, you know? Like, it, anything worth building takes a while to build. Mm-hmm. And so I remember when I got four people the first time, I was like, should I keep doing this? Like, is this going to be worth it? Like, I'd done it once, and I was, like, expecting... Well, I don't know what I was expecting, but more than four, I guess. Because uh, the week before that, Tyler C. from my season of The Bachelorette, he's kind of, like, the one that blew up that season, if you've heard his name. He came, and we did a workout group the week before, and probably, like, 200 people were there or something. Oh, so, okay. So, so yeah, I saw that also. Yeah. yeah. So I was... That's why it looked so big from the yeah, beginning. I was like, whoa. How did that like, happen? Yeah. So that was... He posted on Instagram and all these girls. <laughs> 200 people showed up. Yeah. yeah. That was due to Tyler. So I definitely wasn't expecting that. But I guess I was hoping for at least, like, 10 or something. Yeah. Um, but so four people showed up. I was like, whatever, we'll do it again. And, like, some more came. And, and it just kind of kept growing. And now it's done because of the weather and everything. But... Um, the, I mean, we still have the group message that we're all part of and like everybody keeps hanging out. People are going out on the weekends together. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did like whole friends giving together. Like it's a really like fun friend group now. And it, Shit, and it worked out nice because there was a bunch of people who were new to Atlanta mm-hmm. side and we're like, well, I guess I should try to make friends like somehow. And so they would, would come and now a lot of them have like, some good friends. So it worked out. Good stuff, man. Good yeah. Thing. So glad I did it. Uh, maybe I'll do something like that in Knoxville. I'm not really sure. We'll see. Mm. So once it gets warm, and warm. yeah, you definitely should. For yeah. Sure. So, did uh, you meet Courtney through those workout groups? Courtney. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah. So I did. So I met Courtney through that. I'm trying to remember why she came. If she came on, she was at Broga real early on with uh, yeah, her other she, running friend. That's what I don't know. She. I remember initially her and another girl. They had both gone to Georgia Tech, so they probably maybe knew about me from there. Um, they both came, and then I remember Matt came to one of the workouts too, and so he talked about Broga, and I told everybody it was great and they should go. And so mm-hmm. I do remember Courtney and her friend went. Um, so yeah, Courtney. Lauren, I think. Um, the one I'm thinking I mean, of, her name's Haley. Haley, yeah. Um, Haley lives, yeah, she lives at U, up at UJ now, but. Um, 
but yeah, Courtney's a good friend of mine now. Uh, she had a couple more like track friends that also came to the workouts and stuff that were really cool. Um, so yeah, it was a fun little fun little workout group. Yeah, because I met up with her and her roommate and a, another girl at yeah. New Realm. Yeah. And she was like, oh, hey, mate, Mateo's coming. Yeah. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you and your brother. Yeah, we showed up. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah Leanne. Leanne, I think it's Leanne. Leanne, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so, yeah, they're cool. They're good people. Yeah, sure. great people. Love them. Yeah. Um, good vibes. Yeah. Um, I love running, too, people that run like that. So, yeah, me, they're Haley, ridiculous. And they just run constantly. Dude, they're very, they are ridiculous. Yeah, runners. they'll just like crank out a couple of, like some miles every day. And, and then the Courtney's so funny. She'll like, I like, from me doing a marathon, it seems like she's maybe like kind of intrigued in doing one on her own. And I'm like, Courtney, literally in like three weeks, you can be ready. Like, I like we I went and did a 20 mile run with her once. And she's like, oh, like, I haven't, like, this will be the most I've ever run. Like, the longest I ran so far was like 10 miles like four months ago she cranked out like 20 miles at like a at a solid pace like no problem yeah I've seen, she's I like, see her posting yeah she was like 19 the other day yeah well now, well now she's marathon training and I, but I was like I was like Courtney without even training you knocked out 20 miles it, like before <laughs> like why do you think you can't do the marathon you need like you ran professionally yeah, like you, you need you need like a couple weeks to just like be confident that you can make it to 26 and like i'm pretty confident you could just do at it. like a high pace I'm yeah sure. yeah so um but yeah so she's marathon trained now she i think she did like 15 14 or 15 miles the other day at a sub eight minute pace and stuff like that wow. so she'll be fine yeah wow. like she, she's doing well in me. february yeah she keeps a solid pace for a long time that's for sure um so yeah, I think she'll have fun with it. She'll do one in February. Oh, work. Yeah. I'll have to train with her. I'll hit her up. Yeah, yeah. See, I know she's looking for running partners and stuff like that. She's like mm-hmm. trying to get me back into it, but I'm like, I don't think I can run 50 miles right now with my leg. <laughs> so uh, we'll see. Hopefully I can get there so I can run with her. Dude, one of the best ways to run is in grass and without shoes. That's what, <laughs> well, so I, I mean, it's funny you said I mean, in grass, period, with yeah. shoes, but yeah. I, I run, I've been doing barefoot yeah, this, this last I, I year would here in Yah. Preferably, yeah, I would definitely like to run on grass as opposed to concrete. It's like nonstop grounding too. Like, yeah, you know what that is? Yeah, where you're, you're like barefoot, barefoot yeah. without yeah magnets, tech, and yeah, I'm tech a little bit, but yeah, just yeah. sun direct connection, maybe near a tree. Yeah, and yeah, so dude, I I typically run at night up at the golf course. That's what, yeah, I've seen you post that. Yeah, Bobby floor. Jones yeah. golf course up here, and it's... You probably look like a crazy person just running around the golf course. Oh, but, well, I mean, yeah, yeah. And especially, yeah. like, in my yeah. short shorts, yeah. like, other people run there, too, just on oh, you're not the, the concrete one? hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm the only one running... On the golf course. On the actual <laughs> grass, and... But I like I tag them in my story and like they they're cool with it. Like yeah. they literally they're like, ah, whatever. if there ever was like a, a security yeah. person there, which I've never seen yeah. at night, um, and be like, no, they said I could be like, Yeah. You know. Okay, well, all right. well that's cool. I didn't I didn't know if you were just like, like grass is so nice. No, I mean it's open. Well yeah, it's a golf oh, course, so the yeah. grass is gonna be great. <laughs> Oh my god, dude. Like, yeah. you don't have to worry about rocks. Yeah, perfectly, perfectly manicured. It's perfect, dude. Yeah. Like, none of these buckhead men are gonna, buckhead boys are gonna yeah. step on a rock on their golf course. Oh, yeah. And pitch a fit. Like, yeah, I mean, exactly. that'd be the end of it. Yeah, so it's perfect. I didn't even think about that aspect of it. Oh my then god. Then it would be the, like, the nicest grass you could run on. It's so, it's, oh, oh. I'm telling you, man, you gotta try it. I'll give it a shot. Maybe that's what's wrong with my knee. It's too much, uh, too much pounding. And which, then which on your tippy toes, sure. something I've been doing is developing arches, which mm-hmm. I've literally, I mean, I don't have as much on this side. Maybe I can't flex it as Did well. Do you have flat feet? Oh yeah, yeah I, mean, I still do. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, I didn't even have an arch like this uh, cool. a year ago. Heck yeah. Well, that's what, uh, yeah, it's funny you brought up the running barefoot because I do know, like, uh, week ago I think I was like all right like I've taken this like a month off now after this ultra marathon like I've stretched and strengthened my hips let's see if I can run again so I, I put on my running shoes and I ran like a mile and a quarter or something mm-hmm. like that and it just started flying up again and I was like 
like still. I was like, I can't, I can hardly run over a mile before it flares up. So I walked all the way home. And, uh, but like when I was running, my feet just felt so like, they felt like they were coming down all shaky. Like it was like my foot couldn't really figure out how I wanted to land. And so I felt like the shoes just weren't, like at least for me, just weren't doing well, which is interesting because I ran the whole marathon in them before and loved them the whole time. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where that came from. But so I have some Vibrams, the, the oh, yeah. shoes. And so I went and ran those the other day and did two miles fine. Game and game. I was like, okay, I think I'm going to go back to these. Because I, for a long time, I had run in those. And then I switched to shoes mm. and suddenly had issues. So, uh, you don't want to run in concrete with them too much. That's the problem is that like, then I ended up running on concrete with them. But it's still, yeah, at least it was, grass. it was at least better than the, the shoes I was wearing. Where do you live? Uh, over by the jail, Fulton County Jail. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's like ten minutes away. Nice, it's pretty close. Um, but yeah, it's like a little past Fulton. It's called Rice Street. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Rice Street. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice. Uh, yeah, so not too far away, which is nice. Mm -hmm. It's fun running all throughout over here. Yeah, like West Atlanta. Yeah, you just need shoes. I mean, I guess you use the five finger will. Yeah. Um, go up to Bobby Jones. Right around there. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to see. I'll find Be my park in the back of Oval. Yeah, yeah. Or that's, the, that's where I used to run a lot. The big Oval down there. Yeah. Um, and that grass is pretty good. It's, yeah. it's a little wet in some spots a lot it's of times. Where, where to avoid. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'll figure it out. I'm taking these. I'm switching up to workouts while I can't run. So I'm just doing other stuff now. Mm. Uh, but definitely bummer. Yeah, it's just smart with the class pass, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I signed up for like the... Just tell them to follow David. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what, yeah. The best place to go is wherever David's going. Just follow him to Land. He'll tell you. So I guess, uh, I guess tonight would be Reverie. Tomorrow is wherever else you're going. There's actually a few other events going on, so I'm creating the Mister Atlanta event list. Cool. Um, me and these three other guys have been going to. I'm sure you've seen my stories. Yeah. A buttload of events over the past three or four months. Cool. Um, sometimes four in a day. Nice. And they're all free food, free entry, free yeah. booze, free merch, a lot of them. Cool. And then you get to meet some of the most badass people in the city. Right. Some of them, so that's, like that's two. Invited, you're getting invited to them? or pretty anybody? much anybody can go. Okay. Sometimes you have to RSVP before cool. um, and let them know that you're going to go. It's probably like 50% of the cool. time. What kind um, of events are those? Like, uh pop-up shops or something or everything what? bro um a lot of them are like apartment complex new apartment complex cool. open up showing off the place architects will go there get to meet like cool. people that designed it and work there and you know cool. be hosted by jezebel nice. so stuff like that civic stuff also um which is one of the things i really like are like the local events i also have free food and stuff nice. um but then art shows a cool. buttload of art shows and now you just get to see some of the co coolest paintings with right. vibe with the coolest people. Um, and that's by far the most fun. The art shows. Uh-huh. The art okay, shows. Cool. Interesting. And then also parties and, and different stuff. Um, nice. So that is going to be three different tiers. Tier one is going to be 30 events a month, all these different places that I pretty much said. Cool. Tier two is going to be like tiers of lots. Tiers of people like signing up for it or something. Right. Cool. And, Absolutely. Cool. Um, and just, so two will be places that where you normally have to pay something to get cool. in, um, maybe like a nightclub, different yeah. bars, stuff like that. Um, cool. Different level events, and then tier three will be something crazy. You know, like yeah. you know, unlimited. You know, yeah. Wherever you go, a more bougie place, something maybe like a music festival, concert, stuff set like stuff that. up. Yeah. Cool. And so you'll kind of like help set up and inform people about random events going on mm -hmm. in the city and stuff like that. Cool. Okay. Are you launching that kind of in the new year or when? Yeah, in the new year. Nice. Um, I don't have a hard date on it yet, but. Yeah, figure it out as it comes. Yeah, I'm talking it into existence Heck yeah. a little bit. That's what, that's what I kind of think is nice about stuff like this, where it's uh, like, if you put it out there, you feel like a little more pressure to like, all right, well now I have to do it because like, I need, to, I need to get it done by this date because that's what I told people. Whereas when you keep it in your head, it's easier to be like, well, you know, I can do it later and don't worry about it and stuff like that. So. End of the year. That's my goal. Cool. I'm saying it. I couldn't agree with you more. That's one of the best parts about podcasts is it gives you some accountability. Yeah. Also the listeners, 
You'd be like, hey, how's that going? Yeah, like you said, yeah. yeah. And I didn't want this too. I did a poll on my Instagram story asking people about how much they would pay on different levels. And it was like 40 people responded saying between 40 and under, no, 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 uh, between 40 and 60. It was like 15, 40 and under, 25, 60 and over. That they pay per month for 25 to 30 free events. That's what I put in my question, yeah. Okay, heck yeah. Anyway, and you're happy with those numbers? Absolutely. Heck yeah. Dude. Yeah. And I mean, you get your money's worth just after attending a couple. Yeah. Um, so like the one I I went to Saturday, I went to like four on Saturday, but um, I went to the Mercedes-Benz Stadium and then the tailgate in the yellow lot nice. and then Mark Carroll's toy drive, which was at Terminal West. Cool. It's like a $75 per, a person event. Cool. Um, and then we went to Pat's place right over here and then Graveyard. The basement, nice. okay, which nice. was like a party, ten yeah. bucks. Um, but yeah, like the Christmas party was 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 nice. It was lit. Yeah. You know, it was two free drinks, but um, you know, we had people yeah. there, and I was with the DJ. Cool. I'm about to help start promoting, marketing this DJ, and I actually feel very similar as you do with the, uh, you know, in, being an influencer yeah. and getting paid and and trying to represent a brand that you. I mean, even if it's a good one, yeah. Um, yeah, just, but if they don't have like a good way to to receive it and dish it out, and yeah. if it feels tacky or, or corny yeah. or forced, especially if it's something I don't philosophically agree with, yeah, um, I was contacted by this company like nine months ago to do be an ambassador of their pre prepaid meals. Okay, and I was like two months into my prepaid meals, like a meal, like a like kind of like a Blue Apron sort of thing, or what? Very cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know what? Fuck it. It's called Fresh and Fit. Cool. And they they have locations all over the country. Um, yeah. Different coolers that you can order online and get the food delivered to those coolers somewhere nearby where you live and go pick it up. And so I was working at X3. They wanted me to represent this food on top yeah. of the company. And it's good food. They gave me like... Yeah. 20 samples, bro. Like, yeah. I had all the samples yeah. and pretty much all vegan, vegetarian. Nice. Um, but they were at first every, or cautious to let me go tour the facility. Which was like, okay. okay, why? Yeah. And secondly, really first and foremost, they put the food in plastic containers yeah. and recommend that with this plastic lid and a plastic cover, Yeah that you put it in the microwave in that container and then eat it. Yeah. And I just, from the jump, I don't agree with heating stuff up in plastic, yeah. heating stuff up, or plastic yeah. in your food. I mean, I'll do it if I have to yeah. have plastic in my stuff, yeah. but ideally like- You wouldn't eat all your meals like that. No, yeah. ever. If I'm gonna heat it up, it needs to be in cardboard, at yeah. least, you know, like there's other ways yeah. And so they like offer me this big discount and do all the stuff and you know, like, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, that's what it's it's funny you bring up the plastic too. I think like like I, I watch all the stuff on like trash and or you hear all the stuff about trash and pollution and stuff like that. And I feel like we're like as a society we're so in love with the idea of recycling, but I feel like we're totally missing out on like the two other R's. Like people are always like. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. Mm -hmm. And then all we talk about is recycle, which is clearly the weakest of the three, I feel like. Absolutely. If you buy one thing and just use it forever, that's gotta be better than recycling. Like, I don't know the science behind it, but it's gotta be. Or if you just like reduce the amount you're using, that's also better than having used it in recycling. Like, it's weird that we focus so much on recycling when clearly the other two are the the better, more impression, better options. But I guess it's those are just kind of like less convenient than just throwing something in the blue bin. Um, but I, yeah, I do hope that eventually society maybe will focus more on those other two rather than just recycling. Because you're like, oh, it's plastic, but it's recyclable. First off, I'm not confident it is actually being taken care of in a proper manner. Even if it is, still the other two options are better. Facts. So, yeah. Mm. So. I don't know how to make that change. I don't know how to make people care about it more, but I feel like that uh, 
it's something that hopefully will happen in the future. If it was just kind of like more of a mental, a minimalist, yeah, uh, minded environment. Yeah. If, if our our community, these people would would want to live more like yeah. that, because I know I didn't for a lot of my life. Yeah. Um, and I've just kind of really adapted deeply into it. That yeah. less is more, and everything you own owns you. Yeah. So it's um, a lot of these things are a burden, it's tech and clothes and all these extra stuff. Yeah. Um, and we we just don't need it, you know. Yeah. I yeah I live very minimally. I don't even have a bed. <laughs> I sleep on like a mat on the floor. Really. And I love it. Really? I like love my little mat on the floor. Yeah. That's what's up. Uh, I like it more than a bed. Um, what's I gonna, what's I gonna say? Oh yeah, I think the problem with like, like the thing is recycling is just so much easier than the others. And like consumers just aren't gonna really change their habits is the problem. Mm-hmm. And so like we need, we don't like, we need companies or something to kind of like push us along the change or for government policies to kind of push you in that direction or something. But, and what I mean by this is like when I go to the grocery store, I buy a new gallon of milk every time. And so that milk jug is plastic and I recycle it. And hopefully it actually is being recycled. We'll see. Mm, um, gotta give up that regular cow milk, bro. Get to a nut milk. Whatever. Let's say, let's say it's got a gallon of cashew milk. Either way, it's all coming in this packaging, right? And you knew I, I love cashew yeah, milk. Yeah. And, and so I, I dream of a day where there's a, like a supermarket and I understand there's a lot of issues in whether it's like expiration of foods and stuff like that, where I can bring the same jug back and fill it up and bring it home. Like I don't need a new jug every time. If I can just reuse the same jug, I would be very happy with that. If I could have like come and like refill my same box of cereal or my bag of chips or something like that, if it was basically all just like sort of a refillable system as opposed to entirely new containers every time, I would love that. But I understand there's a lot of issues for supermarkets and stuff like that, but I'm hoping one day we can be it, we can operate in a way where that's the case. And I don't have to throw away jugs every time. Just have the same one. I love that. Yeah. I have a dream. Yeah. And so I don't know. That's gonna be a little nice blurb right there. That's good. Yeah, like a little sound bite. Mm. Um, but I mean, but it's true, because I'm like, I'm like, why do I have to throw away the stupid jug every time? Like, why can't I just fill it up? But obviously the problem is if you just have a giant vat of milk, how do you um keep track of what the expiration date of that bat is. Do you have mm-hmm. to wait for it to con- completely be empty, clean it, and then have the truck dump it in again? Maybe, and that's probably very inconvenient for the store. I don't know. Probably not sanitary either. Yeah, it might not be sanitary. It's like, it's tough to say, but if there was a way to do that, I think that'd be awesome. But you see in some grocery stores where there's like, a, at least for more so like non-perishables, like it might be dried beans or rice or nuts and stuff. You're kind of saying, right. I haven't been to Whole Foods in a while, but for yeah, yeah. there's oh, yeah. spices and stuff. You Man. just like, yeah, you don't for like, um, I have seen like the, like the instant peanut butter makers or whatever. Like you can, mm. you grab the cashews from here, dump them in the machine and like cashew butter basically comes out. Um, cashews are the prime yeah. rib of nuts, bro. Yeah, they're good. They're oh good. my God. Oh yeah. I wish they weren't so expensive. I know. I have a, that popsicle guy gets them on bulk. I need oh, really? to get some oh, really? there. Yeah, get some there. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I've thought about that for a while. How could a grocery store operate in that way? You need to try making your own cashew milk or almond milk. Uh, yeah, or just, I've heard I it's mean, pretty easy. Have you some, bought, have you, have you had yeah, so, a bunch so of different milk? I say gallon milk, but we actually mostly drink almond milk. That, yeah, okay. so. Um, what was that? But like, I, oh. I mean, I guess I drink. It was cow easiest. Milk, uh, it was an easier uh, image to produce with the gallon jug of, of plastic, like a plastic thing. So, um, but yeah, I hear it's pretty easy. Like you basically just like take some water, throw some nuts in it, maybe throw some dates in for like sweetness, and then bam, you like blend it up, and you got some nut milk. I need to buy dates. They seem to be like the sweetener that everybody's going towards these mm-hmm. days. Like, I mean, even just in general, eating dates are delicious. <laughs> Yeah, there gets that. Well, two other really good sweeteners are coconut sugar. Okay. Um, that's probably I think everything from the coconut is amazing. Coconut yeah. oil, coconut milk. Um, coconut oil is more powerful than Neosporin for cool. healing cuts. It's exactly. also like a natural lubricant, it's the best to cook with. Nice. Oh my god, I use it, I put it in my coffee. Really? Yeah. Okay. I have heard of people these days putting like 
oils and fats in their coffee. Yeah, I use ghee butter and coconut milk. Okay. I understand ghee butter and honey are not vegan. Um, I don't know what ghee butter is, but... It's like a specially refined butter. butter. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, honey honey always falls in that weird spot. Where it's from bees, but it's like four plants, yeah. right? Yeah, it falls in the weird category of like, ah, uh, like where do we, what do we consider bees? And like, you know, they seem to like doing that work. They do it on their own. So right. Like, is that bad? <laughs> like, yeah, there's like a little moral dilemma there. But if you cut them out, you cut out, it, it becomes almost like un, like unstable or unsustainable for to be vegan. Like you cut out too many things. I feel like. Yeah. For sure. You kind of feel like, all right, I'll let it slide. I'm working hard on the other ones. I've been working really hard on cheese. Um, Because cheese cheese is is so damn good. Well, I mean, they literally designed it to be so addicting, so tasty, with no fiber. Yeah. And no, it sure has protein, but it's shit protein. It's not the good kind of protein. It's not like an avocado. Yeah. Yeah, I love, I love cheese. I do too. Yeah. My brother and I, for a while, every week, we buy new cheese at the grocery store and try to taste it and pretend like we were connoisseurs. Like, yes, this one's much more creamy than the last. Mm. <laughs> we haven't really learned much, but it's pretty good. Yeah, I've been really. I, so, whenever I eat cheese or meat yeah. now, I shit like a, or I fart. Constantly? Like, like crazy. And, <laughs> and it's, it's, it's nuts because. I can eat that whole, like, everything you see that's out of that bean container so far, mm-hmm. I ate last night. Oh, jeez. And, like, I don't fart from beans anymore. Weird. Yeah, because there's always that saying. That would no, I know. Would make right? It otherwise. Normally, but I really don't. Like, meat makes me fart like crazy. I shot this Brazilian wedding Yeah. Um, so all a few Brazilian months ago, and so they had this, like, Brazilian steak that just yeah. looked... And I was I was starving. I yeah. worked like sixteen hours, yeah, like, well, and there wasn't any other that. food, right? Yeah. So I was just and dude for three days. I just had and like so meat won't come. You won't poop it out for like a day or two. Yeah, it takes that much longer. But each food t- has different digestion times yeah. and types of food. Um, fruits are going to be the quickest. Yeah, and so beans and stuff like that it turn out like twelve to twenty four hours and. It's just nuts seeing it so quickly come out. My poops are so enjoyable now. I put them up on my squatty potty. Gross. Just let it go, bro. No, man, it's natural. Everybody poops, man. Come on. All right, interesting. Well, uh, well I'm glad your your stool quality is doing well. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Well, yeah, I'm happy to have a, a, power, a, a solid stool. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I heard there's like even toilets now that will. Uh, I haven't seen any in America, but I heard there's like some new toilets that will like analyze basically whatever comes through and like send it to your doctor or something like that. Like basically kind of like monitoring you through that way. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I would imagine that's probably more in Japan and stuff. I've never seen more sophisticated toilets than I had in Japan, but yeah, I would imagine something like Korea that. Korea is also super sophisticated. Yeah. Yeah. Korea pretty is pretty the pretty most pretty. wired country in the, in the world. Really? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Japan, I think is second. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, I've never gotten to go to Korea, but I just want to check it out. Change my perspective on the world. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I definitely want to go. It's just so far away. It's been a It sucks how long and how expensive it is to get to mm-hmm. all these other places. Yeah, it is, for sure. My girlfriend in college was teaching English out there, and so cool. I spent 10 weeks. Okay, so that's why you went out there? Mm-hmm. Oh, really cool. Thank you. And traveled around. Yeah, that's a long time to be there. With her. Oh, yeah. All right, really cool. And Got immersed in it, bro. Like, right. it, it was amazing. Everything's so cheap, affordable. Yeah. The food, the taxis, they love Americans because yeah. most of Korea is native born. Cool. 99% of the people that lived in Iksan, where we were, are natives. Yeah. So, like, the 1% of any other non Korean, yeah. they're like honking their horn, waving. Yeah, like, yeah you're, I you're need such now. Like yeah, yeah, dude. And it was it was just really special. Everything's so efficient too. They have hot water that runs underneath the floors, nice. which yeah. as heat rises, right, to insulate. And these places are so well put together. Wow! Thank you guys so much for tuning in to my longest podcast so far. Y'all can find Mateo Valles on Instagram and Twitter. M a t t e o v a l l e s. We got cut off as all the memory cards filled up. 
So, sorry for the abrupt exit. Love you guys so much. Would truly appreciate if y'all take a screenshot of this on whatever listening device you're using and share it to your story. Tag David Olin Brown and the Mr. Atlanta podcast, and I'll truly appreciate it. Let me know what y'all think in the comments and look forward to the next episode.